So we're going to jump right into piecing our Glam Clam quilt. Um, the first video I did on this was a few years ago. I'm going to leave that video up for just a little while. But um, this shows the all new way to use the clammy templates um, with the pressed registration marks to put it all together. Um, as you can see, I have all my stacks um, of my labeled rows for my whole quilt. Um, kind of the strategy for putting this quilt together, it's pieced a row at a time from top to bottom. Each row is pieced from left to right, um, starting with the top row. And um, I'll show you how to piece in just a second. We'll get to the fun part. Um, but I, kind of as a strategy, I generally will lay my whole quilt out. I'll stack it from left to right and put a little um, row label on top of it. This is included as a bonus in your pattern and just a little straight pin through that just to hold it together. So this is left to right. That's exactly how I'm gonna pick it up and piece it. Then I generally take these a row at a time to my ironing board and I press my registration mark. So you guys have seen um, the video on that already. So I have the first couple of rows pressed just so that I can demo this all for you. The top row is very simple. All we're gonna do, right sides together, quarter inch seam. Um, for this particular quilt, as for most of my curved projects, um, I put my quarter inch foot with a flange on. So you'll see that foot here, it has the little black flange on the side. Um, it's because we use utilize our hands a lot differently at the machine. I also set my machine up for quarter inch settings. So for this machine, it's 2.2 or 2.4 stitch length and um, between 8.3 and 9 for your quarter inch. I do a very scant quarter inch on these seams, so I keep mine all the way over to 9, but anywhere between probably 8.5 to 9 on this particular machine works really well. Your machine will have your own settings. For any reason, if these aren't the same height, you're going to line it up along the curve because you want a nice smooth curve to piece that clamshell into. So we're just going to quickly so the whole top row, this is just a little baby quilt for demo purposes with a quarter inch seam. On this top row, you can do a little locking stitch at, or a back stitch at the beginning of that curve. Um, and this is the only row on the Glam Clam that is pressed open. I usually will take this to my ironing board and do it, but since I want to continue demoing at my machine, I just brought my little seam roller over so I can press those seams open pretty quickly here. I don't do an adequate enough job. You know I like the nice crisp seam, um, the nice, the crispness of uh, that iron and steam will give you, so I use that a lot when I'm sewing. Okay, so now let's get to the fun part. How do we piece those curves? So you see I have row one sitting right here. I'm just going to set this in my lap for a moment. We have row one sitting right here. And a lot of times when I set, I'll set that row, and I'm going to set these aside really quick. A lot of times I set that row next to my machine, and I will place it in the orientation that I'm going to pick it up and place and sew it on. So um, you'll hear me use this language over and over and over again on this video. It's used inside of the pattern. It's also used in a class if you ever take a class from me as well. So I place the clamshell always goes on the bottom of the machine, pretty side up tip pointing away from you every single time. This is for glam clam. Clam toss is a little bit different. We always start to sew on the right hand side of that curve. So that's the side here and that's what goes under our needle. And if you look in the pattern, the illustrations in the pattern will show a little a red circle. That's generally the space that go, ends up under the needle once everything is oriented properly. So if we're piecing this from left to right, this is the curve that this clamshell was getting pieced into. So we place them right sides together. The left side of that curve matches up with the right side of the clamshell. So it feels a little bit backwards, upside down and awkward, and that is perfectly fine. Now, we have our quarter inch seam already set up. We start to sew a few stitches. 
and stop with the needle in the down position. If your machine does not have the setting where you can automatically stop with the needle in the down position, you want to get to in the habit of reaching over and turning your wheel so that your needle is down every single time you stop. Um, these kind of techniques really do benefit from having great habits. So sew a few stitches, stop with the needle in the down position. And we're going to match that first registration mark. Now there's a couple of things you can do. We can hold this down to the base of our machine, especially since we have this really nice flat surface, or we can hold it in our hand. You'll kind of find your own rhythm with this. Um, we're going to be holding that registration mark with one hand and with our opposite hand we're going to be adjusting that edge so it lines up nicely. A little about the geometry of the curve, the only place that's the same length is along the seam line so that the length of this, these two edges are not the same. So we're going to kind of work with it so we can sew it and when we get to our end of our curve it matches up perfectly. We don't have one side that grew an extra inch or half of an inch. So let's get started. So, so we've already sewn a few stitches. I'm holding with re at the registration marks with one hand. I'm adjusting with the other. And as you sew, if you ever get bulk in front of the needle, you're reaching with your left hand and pulling to the back or you're pulling from the left hand side. So sometimes I'm reaching through the neck of my machine and behind, but I'm still pulling the back fabric from the left and to the back, just like that really helps to prevent puckers. It helps to keep it nice and smooth right in front of your needle. Stop at the second registration mark. A registration mark always matches up with another registration mark or a seam line and in this case it's our center seam here. Um, so some of you are going to really really love pins. Pins are like your security blanket. They really make you happy. If in case that's the fact I want you to only pin at your registration marks and you don't necessarily have to pre-pin. You can pin as you go along. So you're utilizing the strength of this technique um, while you're still making yourself happy, which is what this is all about, right? So if you may have noticed, I'm not actually reaching behind to lift my, my presser foot up here. I have a knee lift on this machine and the knee lift is really fabulous because I'm only moving my knee over to the right and it lifts that foot up. So it keeps my hands free so that I can manipulate my fabric right in front of my needle. I can pull that bolt to the back from the left hand side. I can keep everything aligned and it really helps this process as we sew. Stop at the next registration mark and we're going to match the next registration mark. Just like that. Off the top, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that fabric to the back so we get the bulk out of the front of the needle and we're going to sew. Now you may not start this process out sewing as fast as I do. I've actually slowed it down a bit for you here. Um, I want you to start on a medium speed, so slow your machine down and just give yourself time to get the hang of it. Um, you'll find a lot of people encouraging glue basting and things like that. It's a wonderful technique. I generally only use that on my smaller curves. So this is the one place that's sometimes difficult for people to hold on to. So if you see this here, that's the very end. And I encourage you, if you put a pin in it, this is one place a lot of times I'll get my students in class and people that I'm working with to put a pin in. I put it in that way so that as it's feeding under my needle, I can pull it out as it's sewing and I don't have to worry about running over needles. We're going to use the same technique, part of the technique we're holding at that registration mark. We're adjusting with the opposite hand. We're making sure there's no bulk in front of the needle. If there is, they're starting to be here. A lot of times I find that when I get into those kind of smaller sections like the tip on the clamshell, a lot of times I find myself having to adjust a lot more. So just take your time. Even if we pin this curve heavily, we've put 20 pins on this one curve, then you're still going to be stopping and adjusting as you sew so that you don't sew puckers. Pull that fabric to the back. Pull it to the back so it's nice and flat in front of your needle. And this you see, I'm holding onto that pin as it's feeding under my machine so I'm not actually sewing over that pin. Just like that. I'm going to cut my thread and pull that off of my machine. And it's magic. There we go. 
our first clamshell sewn in. So you're going to repeat this however, with however many clamshells you have in your quilt. Um, it does get to be a, b a bit of a repetitive process. So one of my recommendations is if you're not in a class setting, if you're at home working on this on your own, make yourself goals to finish like two rows in a day if you're doing a smaller quilt or a larger quilt, just one row in a day. But make sure you organize everything to start with. So when you're ready to sew, all you have to say, oh, I'm on row three now. And you just sit down and sew. You don't have to think through that process. Okay, so let's, let's sew one more clamshell in, shall we? Right side up. We're looking at the pretty side of the fabric. And this is one of those Hoffman batiks um, in the Me and You line. It's called Enda Batiks. So sometimes it's hard to see So it's, um, which is the front and the back. But I've already identified it. So pretty side up. The tip pointing away always. The right hand side of that curve goes under your needle. This is the shape we're piecing it from left to right. So this is the shape we're piecing it into. When we flip those right sides together, the left hand side of that shape matches up with the right side of the clamshell, just like that. Now one little tip, after the first clamshell is pieced into your row, every subsequent clamshell will be covered when it's aligned properly at your machine by the one you just pieced in. So you see how we can't really see that clamshell when it's laid out properly? Um, and we also don't press until we get to the end of a row. So what I'm just going to do is kind of finger crease this out of the way. So now I'm going to give you a tip that is not in the pattern. So I'm going to line this up like I'm getting ready to sew it. But instead of worrying myself with quarter inch and following using the foot, the, the flange on the foot, which we'll get back to in a minute, the first thing that I'm going to do is to stitch in that previous seam line between a quarter and a half of an inch. So about three eighths of an inch. It doesn't matter what that number is. You don't want it more than a half of an inch, but as long as you start to be pretty consistent from clamshell to clamshell. What this is going to do is a technique that shows you how to make your clamshells come to a really nice sharp point. I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, if you look at my early clamshell quilts, um, like neon and neutral and um, even first kiss all of those you'll see a little gap and it, no matter how carefully I piece them and cut, and cut them out and everything it always happened and if you look at antique clamshell quilts you see it as well but in my mind because of the geometry of the shape it should come down to a point so this is how I figure it out and I'm sharing it with you how you kind of force that sharp point. So once again, I'm sewing in that previous seam line about that far. Maybe one more stitch. About three eighths of an inch, a little bit shy of a half of an inch. And now I'm gonna go back out and get everything lined up and follow my quarter inch seam allowance. So it does not matter where that previous seam line was, you're just gonna stitch right in it. So now, move these out of the way really quick. So now we're going to continue our process, match our first registration mark, get the bulk out of the front of the needle, align those two edges, just like that, and we're going to sew. Alright, I'm back at my machine and we have our first row pieced and of course this is a smaller baby size quilt which is actually a great size for you to practice with and for you to get really get comfortable with the curves. I also encourage you to try one of the larger size clammies to start off with. So this is the 10 inch. As you see we're going four across on a baby quilt. 
Um, a 12 inch also makes great baby quilts. Um, you'll see my quilt sizes and the Glam Clam pattern are a little bit bigger for baby quilts. I like really generous sized baby quilts so they can kind of grow with them and drag them around as toddlers and even use them as a lap quilt when they're, um, you know, are in grade school. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get jump into the next section. I'm only going to start row number two and the reason why I'm going to start row number two is because we have this sort of different shape that we're going to start with and you orient it a little bit different as well. So once again I place that stack the same way I'm going to pick it up and place it on my machine so tips pointing away from you even with this really big chunky tip that we have right here um, if you can see that. So I'm going to move that stack a little bit out of the way and tip pointing away from you and we start on the right hand side of that curve. We're going to do the same thing but in order to sew the right hand side of this curve we just have to turn it 90 degrees that way. So it looks a little bit different and some people get a little bit confused. So that's the visual I want you to see. Now if we look at the, the quilt top that we're starting to build um, of course we're going to sew this left to right so this is the space that that um, half clam so that's a, a left half that's the space that that left half clam is going to fit into just like that so this also the left hand side of this curve matches up with the right hand side of that one so when we flip these together it's going to be just like that you know you're in the right location when a registration mark matches up with another registration mark or a seam line and in this case that first registration mark matches up with the seam line okay so we start to sew this the same way quarter inch seam we have our quarter inch foot on machine set a quarter inch settings we sew a few stitches Start with the uh, needle in the down position to make sure that first registration mark is lined up. So to that registration mark and now we're going to go directly into our curve. And this is sewing the same way we've been sewing all day. Okay, so now we have the very last, um, the half clamshell that goes in row number two. So even rows, odd rows are all going to have full clamshells in them. Even rows are going to have that half clamshell we started off with at the beginning, the left half, and are going to end with the right half. Now remember, if you look at this as a whole clamshell, tip pointing away from you, right side of that curve goes under your needle. So you're starting it out just like it's a home, whole clamshell. The only one that's different is that left half um, clamshell, the one that I just showed you, when you're starting every even row. So when you get to this one, just because it's a half shape, don't let it confuse you. You're still going to start on the right hand side of that curve, and we're going to piece it into the shape here so that's the end of that row right sides together finger crease that seam out of the way match up the ends there the left hand side of the shape matches up with the right hand side of that um, right half clamshell so just don't let this right side get confused on the left side is where you do the half turn let's go ahead and sew that in real quick we're going to press our row and I'm going to talk a little bit about sewing that bottom row in alrighty so off camera 
I sewed a couple more rows in, or actually one more row. So we have the top row, row one, two, and three sewn in. And I wanted to sew that much in so that I can show you a couple of things before we get finished with this tutorial here. One of the things I want to show you is about, talk about is about pressing. Now, um, we press at the end of every row, so we sew a whole row in and then take it to the ironing board and press. And when we press, we're pressing our seams down, therefore the seams don't fight um, where the clamshells meet up. So we see the seams are pressed towards the clamshell um, and the row that we just sewed in. So that's that. The other thing I want to show you is look at those really pretty points. Those clamshells come down a really nice sharp point. So that's kind of the goal. Um, that's where you want to be just like that. I'm really, really happy with that. It makes my brain happy. Um, and so the last thing that I want to show you, which will kind of make your whole experience complete with sewing that clamshell quilt, is how to put on the bottom row. Now, I'm not actually at the bottom of my quilt, but I'm at a place that would look like the bottom of my quilt if I sewed the other. That's a said row 10. So I technically have rows four through nine to sew in, but the shape would be the same as this um, shape after row three here. So I'm just going to show it to you here just so that you can get a visual of how that bottom row goes in. There's just one part that's slightly different. So the registration marks are pressed according to the pattern here. And I'm going to go ahead and sew those on. Now the one thing that's slightly different is that um, when we do sew this in place, I think you can see it in the camera there, but when we sew this in place, the clamshell doesn't come all the way to the end of that bottom row. So I'm going to just show you how to work with that just a little bit. So once again, that corner, bottom corner piece goes on the base of our machine. This is that bottom corner piece. This is the curve. The right hand side of that curve goes under our needle, just like we've been doing. And we kind of do that 90 degree turn on it as well, the same way that we do on our even rows. This is the shape that it's being sewn into here. So we put that right sides together. The left hand side of that shape matches with the right hand side of the, um, the that partial clamshell, which is the bottom left. So we just line that up. And we know it's placed properly if a registration mark matches up with another registration mark or a seam line. In this case, it's a seam line. So that is perfect, just like that. So for a visual, I'm going to kind of flip it down so you can kind of see. And I'm sorry that that's a white clamshell. I should have done a different color. Um, but the curve comes around here underneath the bottom, and that's that clamshell, that uh, bottom left clamshell there. So let's go ahead and stitch that in. And then I'll show you kind of how to handle really the second, um, the bottom half clamshells and how to sew that bottom row in. So we sew to the first registration mark and stop. Then we match our curve just like we've been doing for the whole rest of the quilt. And I'm sacrificing and doing this for you guys because I will come and take these last two out so I can finish sewing my little baby quilt up. <laughs> But I wanted to definitely show you this because it's um, a little important and it's a little bit more difficult to understand when it's written in the pattern. So this gets sewn just like we've been sewing all day. We adjust that fabric to the back from the left to make sure there's no bulk in front of the needle. We adjust those edges together. Sew to that first registration mark. And now this last registration mark, we actually overlap it by a quarter of an inch with that tip of the clamshell there. And I think in the pattern it may tell you to actually fold that back a quarter of an inch to have a, a, another registration mark there, but we're overlapping the tip by about a quarter of an inch. We have bulk in front of the needle. We're pulling it to the back from the left-hand side. Bulk in front of our needle. And then we stitch right to the end of that clamshell. I'm gonna cut my thread. And we're gonna take a look at it first before we put the second one on. So if we look at it, this is how it should look. 
that is the correct way to sew that first one in. So in order to sew the bottom shape, which looks like that, in or instead of pressing, all day we've been pressing our clamshells back so that we can sew the next one in place. But if we do that, we'll have nothing to stitch this clamshell on too. So instead of pressing it back, just on this bottom row, we're actually going to press it to the right. And that's going to give us something to stitch the next um, bottom clamshell too. So we're going to put this under our um, needle. That's the curve that we're piecing in, the right hand side of that curve. If this were a clamshell, the tip will be pointing that way, but we've cut that off because we want a nice square bottom. We're going to line up the, that end and we're lining it up with that bottom corner piece just like that. That is perfect. So we're going to sew and we're going to make sure that when we sew, we sew just to the left of when the clamshell, when that bottom corner piece starts to join the clamshell because we want to capture that kind of raw edge there. So we're showing a slightly generous quarter inch seam just until we get to that point. And then we're going to go ahead and match our registration marks. So I'm going to go all the way around so you can see how we start the next one because it's the same way we started this one. But I want to repeat it just so you can kind of get a grasp on it because it's just a little bit different. Make sure everything's nice and smooth there. Of course, it's a little bit more awkward because our seams are being folded in the, a different direction than we've been doing them all day. So you just want to make sure it's nice and flat in front of your needle. So to the first registration mark, match the next one. Of course, a registration mark always matches up with a registration mark or what? A seam line. So here we are just adjusting that fabric to the back to get it out of our way lining up our edge there, getting the bulk from in front of the needle, getting the bulk from in front of the needle, just like that. Stop at the next registration mark and match the next one. So we're almost at the end of that seam. Um, and as your quilt starts to grow, you do have to manage a little bit of the bulk, but remember it's just the quilt top. It's not like the three layers when you're quilting it. So it's easily manageable. A lot of times, um, since I do sew on the small table, I actually set up a chair with a chair back right next to it so that can kind of support the weight of the quilt top as I'm working on it. But you just have to take, your, take a little time and sort of manage moving things around so that it's not pulling on your needle and that you have room right around your sewing area to, to kind of work with. Stop at the next registration mark and then once again that little tail is going to overlap it by about a quarter of an inch. That is the right way to do it. Just like that. Remember if you get bulk in front of your needle you're always adjusting that fabric pulling it to the back from the left hand side and I'm actually once again reaching under to do it but this is the movement that's happening here we're pulling that fabric from under our needle to the back and I am also using my knee lift to raise that foot up so if you have it definitely use it if not it's pretty easy to do this as well so right past the end of that clamshell and let's take that off and look at it as well Oh, it's so pretty. Look at all the fabrics. Okay, now, so once again, that clamshell stops about two inches from that bottom of that shape. Um, and it looks perfect here the way it's pieced together. So remember, we have been pressing that um, the seam to kind of the left when we're looking at it from the back in order to get it out of the way. But this time we're going to press it to the right. That creates a nice smooth seam for us to sew that next bottom clamshell to or bottom cl partial clamshell to. So we would do the same thing right side up. The right side of that curve goes under the needle and we match it to the left side of the curve that we're piecing it into and the left that's the left side that's the curve that we're piecing it into. So I hope that was a little pretty clear on how you do the bottom row. 
Um, but that is the end of the Glam Clam tutorial. I hope you got a lot from that and that you have a lot of fun in putting your Glam Clam quilt together. Remember, nothing's ever difficult if you take it one stitch at a time. Thanks so much.